Chris Bumstead. Noel Olson. Literally the most aesthetic man on the planet. First off, the guy is huge. The guy is huge. In every sense. He's won Mr. Olympia the last two years in a row, and he's about to make it a three-peat. He's an elite athlete at the top of his sport. I don't look anything like him, but today I have the chance to live a day in his life. He's gonna eat like a bodybuilder. I'm gonna work out like Chris. And he doesn't know it yet, but he's gonna learn to pose like a bodybuilder too. I don't know that I'm gonna be able to keep up, but I'm gonna do my best. Chris just moved down to Florida. I'm excited, he's not too far away. It just makes sense for us to link up today. Ready for war, never back down, give me some more. We came for the title, killing the game, get on the rise. Hey, what's up, pup? What's Most up, important big guy? greeting right <laughs> yeah. there. What's nice up, man? Nice to, yeah, nice to meet you, man. Hey, I heard somewhere that Daddy Seabum is your nickname. Does that have to do with having like a more an elderly personality, just kind of an old chill guy? I don't know if, that, maybe that's where it came from. People <laughs> you have started no calling idea. me dad, I okay. don't know why. My whole fitness journey started in the bodybuilding world. Mm -hmm. Definitely not to the extent that you're yeah. doing it now. It was just the same way that it does for every like high school age male where you wanna just get, get big just up. cause. Yeah. Um, and so I started doing that for a while, but then I transitioned into CrossFit about 11 years ago. So mm -hmm. I'm not as familiar with all of the fine details of this level of bodybuilding. So. I want to kind of learn some of the ins and outs of it from you today. In a year, I'll take like a few months off and then I'll have like six to eight months of off season. Okay. And you're not just training muscle, you're actually eating, trying to progressively train your metabolism to be able to handle more food. This is during the off season? During the off season. Okay. So like a few months of just slowly eating up, like increasing huh. your calories. But Start you're, with you're like, consciously doing that. Yeah. Cool. You're not so, just six months of like no, not eating doing like whatever shit. I want. Yeah. You'll start low, like 3,500 calories after prep, yeah. just to get back into it. And I'll add like 300 calories every couple of weeks. And then if by the end I'm eating more calories than I was the year before, and I'm in the same shape, my metabolism's working better. Mm. What does your eating look like now a month out from the Olympia? Usually when I'm in prep, at least when my calories get really low, I like to really push my, like when I eat back, because I get cravings mm. and I get really hungry later in the day. Yeah. So if I don't eat breakfast until 11, 11.30, and then I can eat again in two hours and again in two hours and it feels like better. Yeah. Because for some reason I'm not as hungry in the morning. Okay. So I just wait to eat breakfast as late as possible, like around noon. That makes noon, sense. And then it makes the rest of the day easier. I really try and just focus on every year that's okay. in front of me. One at a like time. right now, yeah. I just want to win the next one. Mm -hmm. And depending how I feel after that, if I'm just driven, I want to keep going, like I'm going to keep going. I'm fueled up. Yeah. You want to get going to the gym or? Yeah. Let's do it. Do you I'm care what we train right. today or? Chest day, so it's a okay. good day. Yeah. Isn't chest day every day in the bodybuilding It is, world? it's not Monday, but <laughs> okay. it's still chest day every day. Perfect. But yeah, let's get to it. Awesome, yeah. sounds good, man. Game Some chest, time. let's do it. Yeah, Alrighty, go. Let's do it. Five, bodybuilding is kind of taboo for whatever reason, like, even though it's something that we all started doing, mm -hmm. like I transitioned from more bodybuilding style training, everybody makes fun of the guy in the corner doing the, the bicep, bicep curls, curls right? Yeah. So it's interesting. I don't know why that is the case, but hopefully we can maybe help bridge that gap a little bit. I, I've never understood, I've never understood that myself. Just you're pushing your body to insane athletes. limits. You're a very competitive athlete. Totally. And you have the actual performance side, whereas like bodybuilding, you step on stage and your work's done, you're presenting and the posing, but you're not competing. I'm not in a race against you, I have to beat you to do this or we'll lift more than you, it's just like I look better. Yeah. That's been crazy to me that physio or psychological, like somebody puts their hands on the bar and all of a sudden they it's touch, like, yeah. It's crazy. Especially if someone touches like you, like you feel it and you're like, oh. Is that even more? But I'm not really doing much. Yeah. It huh. does definitely, if you, when you take away stabilizing, it makes it a lot easier, which yeah. I was trying to just lock you in and cool. not push up, just keep you tight. I appreciate it. And that. then you just squeeze your pack. Yeah. <clears throat> Come on, big dog. <clears throat> Oh. Bravo. It's very satisfying throwing them too. Yeah, I bet. 
when you talk to bodybuilders and they're prep and they're dad and they're always like, oh, I need to increase my volume, decrease my weights, I'm getting weaker. And like when I picked those up, they felt like 300 pounds or my off season, they feel easy. Yeah. But when you get into it, if you like mentally get over the feeling that you feel more lethargic and tired, yeah. you can still do it. Yeah. It's not like you lost that much muscle in the That's last week. So if you can like fight past that mental barrier, keep your strength high, keep pushing weights and intensity, and that's just like, oh, I'm tired, I'm not eating enough. Yeah. Makes you a lot better on stage. Yeah, I bet. Even though it is the truth, you are truly underfueled. Yeah. You can push past that, you know, it's just, even though it is a physiological thing, it's kind of a psychological barrier that you can put on yourself. Yeah. Keep it clean. Same form, every rep. There you go. seem like you've got it figured out in terms of like how many reps to do, where to add like these things in and this thing and that just comes with time and exposure and experience. hundred percent. Yeah. It's also so personal right. with everything. Like I'm sure some people's training they can go like seven days a week no breaks and then yeah. take a full week off or something. Some people need to do like two on one off or like just finding how your body's going to respond to For it. Sure. Three more. Three. Come on. Last set. Finish strong. Woo. Good to go. Good to go. Yeah. What's Good workout. Next? That's it. It's a wrap. That's a prep workout. So when we get back together in the off season, we'll push it a little okay. more. I mean, that was a hefty session for what it was. Like it's pretty good, yeah. Going to muscle failure on mm -hmm. almost every set. So always try and go to failure. It's just like the more like volume intensity, some yeah. stuff is just a little bit less than normal. Probably slower pace. Cool. Just to like make sure you still have strength in each set. Yeah. But nice. other than that. Post-workout posing is the next move, so you want to oh, join baby. me? I will do my best. <laughs> See what you look like in the trunk? Yikes. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. This is it. Yeah, that was great advice. Yeah, so posing is obviously a huge component of your sport. I know nothing about it. I know how to flex, but I don't know how to pose. Do it. Yeah, push forward. Chest up. Yeah, so bring your arms forward too. Yeah. And you don't want to look like you're constipated in no. the face, right? Part, that's part of the hard part is being able to flex <laughs> yeah. everything as hard as you can. Okay. And then just like looking like and you, you're not doing it. You're actively like pushing your waist in. Well, that kind of gives more of that yeah, that's tapered like, look. It makes your waist look smaller. Where and are you? And you're flexing your lats. So. Are, you, are you smiling? Are you like I normally stoic? Look, try to look a little stoic sometimes or smile or like when you're in a routine, I'll like when you hit like a big pose, you're like all like smirk or something. Okay. Be a little dramatic. Add a little flair. Add a little flair, yeah. Are the performances themselves pretty exhausting? Oh yeah. Yeah, okay. Like, I, I thought that the training leading up to it would be the hard part, but that also sounds pretty difficult. It's, it's hard, but like you, like sometimes you get, I'll be actually sore the next day. Yeah. Huh. Like my lower back Such is hard so, contraction. So you stand, a lot of it's standing like this. Like this is like the front relaxed pose, which is far from relaxed. Relaxed. But when you, this is how you're supposed to wait on the sidelines the whole time. Okay. So when you're standing this tall, your like lat and back is really flexed and yeah. you do that for 10 minutes up there, you get pretty sore. Yeah, I can imagine. What would that mean to you for your legacy to be a three time Mr. Olympia? It means a lot. Like me winning my third Olympia to me means like I'm really, coming into being like a leader of this division. Classic is still pretty new. It's only been around for like five years. The guy before me won it twice, I've won it twice. No one's ever won it three times. Okay. So I'll be the first guy to have ever won it three times, three in a row. And after that, I go for four, I go for five. And I kind of want to like leave my mark at the beginning of this division as a guy who kind of like set the standard of what classic physique is like meant to be. Right. I want to be like the guy where people coming up are like, they want to compete because they saw Chris Bumstead and they want to look like Chris Bumstead. Like that's the goal. Even when I'm retired, you know, like, so being in a new division, I think it gives me a really like unique opportunity to be able to be that person at the beginning.